What is going on, guys? My name is Pakazak, and uh, today we're going to be discussing the idea of side chaining. Side chaining. So um, I'm going to be talking about like, um, like what it does, what it's used for, and you know, like the application of it. And um, yeah, so let's start off with just like what it does. Like it's called side chain compression because uh, basically what happens is instead of using its own signal to cross the threshold of compression. And by the way, if you didn't know, if you don't know about what compression is, you should go watch my compression video and that'll explain to you. So I won't be explaining it too much in this video, but uh, so basically instead of using its own signal to rise above the threshold and then causing it to, you know, compress, it's using another signal that's coming in, you know, on the side, side chaining. Um, it's using that signal. So whenever that signal goes over the whatever threshold you set, then it's going to compress the other signal. So you're using the side signal just to engage the compression on whatever instrument you want to engage the compression on. So a lot of times uh, side chaining is used with um, like a kick and a bass. And, you know, because like the reason why you do side chaining is because you want to make room at that at that very moment for one of the instruments to like you know to be really heard and then and then as soon as that instrument is heard then it can the other instrument can rise back up but you're basically just like ducking the sound just for that certain moment that that signal that you want to be heard and in case those have very you know close um frequency wise close or closely related so like with a kick and a bass like you know it's it's low frequency usually so you want to when the kick hits you still you want to get that impact from the kick that lowness but you don't want that to um get in the way with the um you don't want that to uh cause a problem with the bass so you just want to clear the bass out and then the kick comes in comes out and the bass comes back up so i set up uh you can do this with a limiter you can do this whatever as long as it has um, a side chain input. So I use this a lot. And so let's just play this what I got without side chain compression. And uh, so that's what it sounds like. And then what you do is you add the side chain input insert two. If you want to know how to do this with like the routing and stuff, you I have the kicks on insert two. So you just right click this and you click side chain, side chain to this track. And then you route whatever your base is. I have it on chain on insert three. And then you just route it only to this. And you can also route it to the master a little bit as well. That's like more, um, more advanced kind of technique of not fully ducking the entire sound, but still having a little bit come through through the master, but that's a totally different story. But uh, yeah, this is just routed only to this channel. So, and then you click here, that's the insert two, whatever your kick is or whatever sound that you want um, the threshold to, whatever you wanna use as the side chain to control the compression of the other instrument. And then you set your ratios, threshold, wherever it is, and it'll sound like this. I'll do it really, um, very um, <laughs> noticeable, very exaggerated, so you can really hear it. So that's basically what's happening. So you set the threshold, which is this line right, right here, and um, and this is really, I mean, it's very visual, so you can see how high the signal is of the kick, and you can set that wherever you want, and then you set your threshold and your knee, whatever, release. You can do a short release. I think I was talking about like doing shorter releases with one of my videos where you get that, um, that pumping sound. And, uh, yeah, so that's basically the whole idea behind side chain compression. And you're just using another signal to alter, to, con uh, to govern the compression of the other signal, the main signal that you want to be compressed. Um, yeah, and you can do this with like a lot of other, you can do this with whatever you want, really. I mean, there's no rules, but, uh, 
the the main focus is basically just to at that moment in time you want to control how loud the other sound is so you can really hear the sound you want to hear when it's in the same frequency range as the other one and um uh and you can but you can just do this however be creative with it and just you know duck things in certain ways and uh you know that's what i always say just be do what you want and do what sounds good and like be creative with all these ideas that i tell you about and just like mess around with it and uh have fun but um yeah i think i about covered everything you can do this whatever instruments you want and uh yeah all right uh let me know if you guys have any questions about this and also um don't forget to like comment and subscribe and uh i guess i'm gonna be doing a lot of basic things just to for any newbies you know they want to look up stuff how to do things so yeah let me know if you have any other suggestions though for videos and whatnot and um i'm working on a track right now so it's very exciting i'm hoping to release it soon but that's just like a tiny little teaser I wanted to tell you about because I know I'm going to finish it and it's going to be great. And the only thing is, I don't know, I feel like it needs lyrics because it's that sort of song. But uh, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Um, I might just release an instrumental version first until I get lyrics. But uh, we'll see. Um, yeah, uh, let's talk to you guys later and I'll see you guys next time.